Am I live? I think I'm live. Hey, everyone. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> this says it's live. <laughs> okay, good. Um, well, I am not Kara. I am actually Matt, and I am here with Nathan Anderson. And we're going to talk about uh, his recent vehicle choice and our recent trip and some fun upcoming things. So it should be a whole lot of fun. All right, we're back. What's up, buddy? What's up? Okay, so for those of you tuning in and wondering what in the world is going on, yes, there is my lovely bride saying hi. Um, yeah, Kara had to leave the house uh, somewhat unexpectedly, not for anything bad. It was a good thing, uh, but she left about an hour ago and said, you get to do the podcast tonight. <laughs> and I said, said okay <laughs> so this uh <laughs> this may be a train wreck but it will be it will be interesting so we'll anyway out. how are you good to see you again i feel like we just we yeah. just saw each other long time no see i know right it's been a while um well for those of you if if you're familiar with the uh with the youtube channel you are should definitely know who uh nathan is he has been with us for a long time for gosh, it's 2019. 2019 Bonfire Run 2019. 2019, it, yeah. Yeah, Bonfire Run 2019 is when we first now. when we first met. So um and been best friends and out as out wheeling as much as possible ever since. As often as we can. So that's right. Um, but uh if y'all will notice behind him, Nathan is well known for his uh 2017 Colorado ZR2, but that is not what is currently behind you, is it? Nope. Nope. Something uh, a little different. <laughs> All right. Tell everybody. Tell everybody what happened. Oh, where to begin? <laughs> you know, I, I bought the I bought the 2017 ZR2, brand new in 2017, and wheeled the crap out of it i would say you know we, we took it to all kinds of crazy places all through the ozarks all over washita all the way to colorado to those trails to utah took it on some amazing trips fortunately just didn't really hold up very well um i think i probably just got a lemon and had lots of engine problems and transmission issues. One thing led to another. and It was just finally time to offload it and put that money into a payment other than, rather than, you know, repair bills on, on stuff that was just going bad. Yeah. So I got to looking around and actually stepped back a little bit. I had ordered a Bronco, actually, because I kind of wanted yeah, to. Yeah, you had placed an order from that. Yeah, I wanted to, you know, test that out and see how it was. And that was the, the new the new thing, the big thing that everybody was hyped about. And uh, so I, I, I ordered one of those. I ordered a Badland Sasquatch with all the stuff on it, you know, fully loaded, everything. And I just, I never was really satisfied with that. It never really stuck well with me. I, I, I don't know. I've, I've never, I've always been a Chevy guy. I never really liked Fords. But I was willing to make a compromise on that because I wanted something that was like a Jeep, but IFS was a little more comfortable. But it still never really just, I never really, really like fell in love with that vehicle. I, I just kind of liked it. Um, and I, I've been, you know, I've wanted a Jeep, you know, I've wanted a Jeep for two years yeah. now or so. And I've been looking at them and I, I'm always sending Matt Jeep links at like, 12 a.m. one o'clock in the morning like what do you think about this <laughs> it's a, a good price and uh so I, yeah. I found this one and it it was it was black which was one of the top two or three colors i i like it's a rubicon 
the 2020 had pretty low miles. It had every single option that I wanted, um, basically fully loaded on the inside. And I noticed it had steel bumpers and it had a worn winch. And the only problem was it was six hours away. Um, so, yeah, it was up in uh, north of Springfield, wasn't it? Yeah, north of Springfield. I think it was Sedalia. Yes, uh, Missouri. Hit. Yeah. Um, five and a half, six hours away. So I called them up, um, got everything approved um, so that I didn't have to go up there and wait as long. I drove up there, and this thing is in immaculate condition for a vehicle, you know, two years old, 20,000 miles. It didn't have the skid plates didn't have a scratch on them. Uh, it was very very clean inside and out. Um, the engine ran good. I drove it down the street, and you know it it, it was pretty much perfect. It, it feels like it's a brand new Jeep, really. Yeah. Um, just somebody got to take the depreciation hit off the front, and so loved it. I got on a group chat with all the jeep guys and <laughs> crawled underneath it and everywhere and they all uh they all said it looked good and went in and signed the papers and left the zr2 there and drove home yeah five and a half hours. it is a good looking jeep and i did get to to look at it it did spend the weekend in my garage mm -hmm. um and i don't think kara actually took it out for a drive <laughs> um but yeah, she we she think yeah. that she said she didn't. We think that it uh, lived life behind an RV, right? I mean, that's that's yeah. our theory. So it's it's missing the that front skid plate on there, and it had these two yeah. little red tow hooks. I think I took them off before those pictures. You did, yeah. Um, but it looked like the little tow hooks for flat tilling behind an RV. So you know, it might it might have been for one trip, or it might have been for its whole life. So I, I don't know, but for the I'm, I'm thinking for the majority of the miles that are on it, it was being flat towed behind an RV. So the engine wasn't running and the transfer case wasn't connected. So I don't know. Yeah. Well, it's, it's definitely, it's definitely good looking. Um, yeah. And I think that you, I think that you, that you did good. Now there's a couple comments here that uh, um, let's see. Diego Rioja says got tired of getting stuck and i want to address <laughs> this because i loved your zr2 i loved yeah. that i loved having it on our youtube channel because it was something different um i actually not so happy that you got a jeep because we're one we're one <laughs> person from getting a jeep away from from ozark overlanding adventures becoming a jeep channel yeah which i don't want yeah. to happen <laughs> um, so you, you did kind of mess that up, but I mean, the ZR2 might correct me if I'm wrong, but I only remember you getting stuck one time and that was with you and Ben oh, and you went through a mud hole first and he had to come around and pull you out. That's yeah, the only was... time I remember you getting stuck. So I think that might've been the only time where I actually got like stuck stuck as in it was too deep and couldn't get through it because of like the capability of the truck there was a few other times where like i would get hung up on the bumpers um or you know stuff like that there was that one time i think it was on Mar our march madness trip when we were going through that mud hole washout and i was literally sitting on the front and the back bumpers and my all four wheels were spinning yes oh yeah I do remember that. Yeah. But other than getting stuck, that truck was extremely capable. You it know, was. All we took it all over Colorado and did all the big, you know, technical trails with it and it climbed the wall at Gipsy Gulch, which I it always did it great. About. And it was <laughs> and except with the exception of just slightly larger tires, it was stock. Yep. No completely stock. lift, just thirty threes. So yeah, um, it was a, it was a very impressive truck, except for when it died, and yeah, that was sad. Um, James yeah. James says guess he'll have to be the one to get a Bronco. So I think that's a Not great James. idea, James. Just go ahead and yep. give Betsy your Jeep and get you a Bronco if she'll Sounds go for good. that. Um, 
But and then there was oh, James also said, "Where's that comment?" Um, this was funny. Uh, inside, the, you you won a lot of trophies <laughs> with that truck. Yeah, yeah. Inside joke. Uh, tell that story. <laughs> um. So you know, I had a lot of issues with it, and went back and forth the dealership, and. And Finally, let me add, all your issues were engine transmission related. They weren't related to the wheeling that was done. Yeah, I, it wasn't. I never it wasn't anything related or... to the off roading or anything like that. It was all no. Yeah, all yeah. normal. That's mechanical. why I think it was a lemon. So you know, I went back and forth to the dealership and GM, and I took it in one time for I think it was, I don't know, probably one of the timing chain problems that it had. And um, they pretty much said, no more. We're not fixing this anymore. And um, couldn't really, they couldn't really give me an answer other than the fact that I, they said I abused it. And they said that I put it in competitions and won trophies. <laughs> and I was like, Which is hysterical. show me the trophies. I would love to That's see hysterical. the trophies that you're talking about. Oh, I love that. I was like, no, it's never been in any races or competitions. I don't know what your where you got the trophy idea, but but no, I finally got tired of dealing with all that, and you know, like I said, I've wanted a Jeep for a while. I I, I love the idea of being able to take the the roof off and doors off and have that open air experience, and I love that you know the Jeep is just built from the ground up to be an off road vehicle. And other than now, with the Bronco, that's really the only vehicle that is designed specifically as an off-road vehicle from the ground up. You know, from, from the axles all the way to the exterior with the fenders, to the engine, to, you know, it's, it's got the, the super low-range transfer case and the all the skid plates, the bumpers, the approach angles, just everything about it is designed to be a very capable off-road vehicle. And mm -hmm. um, that's just kind of the, the, the platform and the basis that I wanted to start on. And um, I, I don't think I could have got another vehicle that was like that. Yeah. Well, B3 Outdoors wants to know if you have a name for it yet. I don't. I don't. The, the ZR2 was named the Silver Bullet after um my dad's old mud bogging truck but no this one doesn't have a name yet so far it's just black jeep that's what kellen wanted to call it black jeep well kara who's uh in the comments uh, said you should oh. name it tj for trophy jeep <laughs> <laughs> oh that'll probably oh. stick now too <laughs> Well, I mean, Water Buffalo has stuck so, mm -hmm. for, for Robert. The trophy Jeep. Um, let's see. Yeah. And, I mean, since you've been, I mean, you've been wheeling with us for three years now. Um, everybody's going to rack, you know, I know you posted the fact that you got rid of the collar you got rid of the ZR2 and you know, you got the Jeep. And so there's inevitably been some comments on the, you know, reliability of them and you know, that sort of thing. So let's discuss of the vehicles that we have all had, that we've been on, that's been on all of our trips, which vehicle has had the least problems. It's gotta be the Jeeps. I mean, the, <laughs> it the is, Jeep, it's we've the regular. Had, We've had we've had more problems out of you know specifically my truck. Um, there was only one of those, and then you know we we've had multiple Toyotas mm -hmm. break, broke down. Both and Tacomas and Forerunners, for both mm -hmm. Tacomas and Forerunners, uh, fifth yeah. gen and fourth gen Forerunners. Yeah, and it wasn't um, because well, a few times, <laughs> including recently, it was you know damaged or or. Uh, you know, user error. Uh, but a lot of times it was just, you know, something broke or something stopped working or, you know, something like that. And, um, you know, I think it goes back to, um, 
the Jeep being designed as an off-road vehicle from the ground up, the the Tacomas and the Forerunners, while they do have like off-road, I got a strobe light going on behind me. They do have off-road variants. They're built on vehicles that you know weren't specifically designed to be off-road vehicles. If you know what I mean, just you know, regular everyday. Uh, vehicles and then they throw some skid plates and you know bigger tires and a locker and things like that on them which and they're great they're great they're just not designed with the intent in mind to do what we do every weekend i don't think and i I think they just you know some of the some of the parts on them and um, just the way they're designed unfortunately I, i just don't think they can handle that abuse like the jeeps can and that's yeah. not a knock to the toyotas at all i i, I love you know i love roberts and nick's forerunner that i i was very close to, to buying a forerunner at one point because I, I really liked their builds and I, I i did like how comfortable they were and everything like that but you know it just goes back to the jeep being the, the very um I don't want to use the word reliable because <laughs> that that word is kind of, you know, um, reserved for Toyotas. But it's just it's a very dependable, very robust vehicle, and that's why I went with it. Yeah, well, um, we have said all along that, you know, stock for stock, keeping them on pavement. Yeah, a Toyota is gonna probably outlast yeah. a Jeep any day. But right. once you start off-roading them and putting them through the abuse that we do, it kind of levels the playing field. Mm-hmm. And well, and like Robert has any, said, any of times, them are going to have most of his yeah, problems have been due to his modifications. Like his right. supercharger has caused a few problems. Running thirty-fives on the stock CV axles has caused him to break a few CV axles. And, you know, things like that. It's it's just, you know, a, a stock Jeep versus a stock 4Runner. The 4Runner is probably going to, the engine's going to last longer. Everything's just going to be, you know, a little bit better. But um, when you when you start taking them off-roading, uh, be, because, like I said, the Jeep is just very off-road centric. It's It has all those things in mind. And uh, it's just going to do a little bit better off-road, I think. I think. Yeah. And I hope so. <laughs> Well, you're about to find out. So Kara's getting on to us. She says, don't turn this into another uh, anti-other vehicle. <laughs> and we're not. We're just talking. Um, i got to turn that strobe light off. It's bothering yeah. me. I'll be right that? back. It's my the, the garage light. Oh. Boom. I'm back. Now you can't see the Jeep. All right. Though. Um, well, let's, uh, let's see here. Thanks, Tony. Yep. Looking forward Tony to, says congrats. Looking forward to getting it out there and willing it a little bit. Yeah. Kyle says the best. Each make and model has its pros and cons, personal decision of what fits them best. So, and yeah, yeah exactly. Nathan has been, Nathan has been longing for a Jeep for a long time. So, yep. Yeah, well, uh, I'm super excited about it. There was a question. Where'd it go? Um, oh, here we go. Oh, Dave asked, what's going to be your first mod? And um, you kind of already, you've, you've actually already done it. Well, I've done a few small little things here and there. Um, as soon as I got it home, I had to take those weird stickers off. I guess you can call that a mod. And then uh, <laughs> I put... Let's see, where are those? Oh, yeah, let's... Where are those? They're, let's yeah, see if find it. There might be a, yeah, yeah, there's that weird that thing was. up that up that was. That was something weird. And then inside they had some Jurassic Park thing going on. Yeah. Yeah, I took and all those then, off. Um, there's a better view of whatever that atom looking thing is. Yeah, and then no they wired the winch funky and brought it outside the grill instead of inside. But you've already fixed that too. Yeah. I, I re ran the winch line up behind the grill and got it you know, kind of tucked away and hidden. Uh, and I put, I, I found the winch remote, hooked it up, made sure it works. Um, and I, I had some ditch lights on the Colorado. 
and I took those off of the Colorado when I brought it home, and or actually before I left, I put those on the front bumper um, and pointed them out a little bit and got those all wired up to the factory um, aux switches, and um, that was super easy. The the aux yeah, switches were really cool. So that was the first mod, I guess, hooking up my ditch lights. You got your lights. You got your you got your Midland in there too, don't you? Uh, Kinda. Don't I don't have it completely wired up yet. My the the wires that I had for my Colorado were not long enough, so I've got to go get some wire. Oh, okay. Find some. I'm sure I've got some around here and get that hooked up. But I do have it kind of mounted where I want, and I've got the handset mounted in the on the dash, and so all I just got to do is wire it up to power, and it should be ready to go. Oh, and I have to. I have to install the antenna. I've got a hood mount coming for the uh, the antenna. Okay, awesome. Is it going to be up, up up on the hood or on the side of the hood? Um, it'll be up on the close to the windshield because the way the Jeep hood curves around, you can't use that little the hood mount thing on the sides. You've got to put it up close to the windshield. So hopefully that works. We'll gotcha. see. Well, I mean, several people have theirs mounted there, so it's it's worked yeah. out well. Hey, look, Robert joined and said, "What's hey, up, Robert? What's up?" Um, let's see. Someone asked uh, Genesis, "Are you excited about the shorter wheelbase? Are, are you noticing a difference driving it?" Um, Robert really says it feels like a, a four wheeler, and that's kind of how I feel with it on the road so far. You it, didn't. You never test drove a two door, did you? Uh, no. Yeah, because they legit feel like a go-kart. <laughs> yeah. They I really just drove a two-door Bronco. And so I kind of got a feel for that shorter wheelbase vehicle. Um, but really, the, the Wrangler's not all that much shorter, as far as wheelbase goes, than my ZR2 was. Um, it's just there's no huge bed hanging off the back. And because pickup trucks... They have all that space in the back, but there's no weight there. Um, it feels totally different because now you have a lot more weight with it being an SUV over the rear axle over here, and it just feels it feels so much better. It feels like it feels a lot more planted. You're going around corners. Also, I took the sway bar off of my ZR2, which was probably not a great idea. Um, so having that little extra stability now on the road is it's it's a lot better. Um, I don't really I haven't really noticed, like I said, a big difference between the wheelbase, but it does ride a lot better than my ZRT did. Yeah, which um, is weird. Which which was a shock because ZRT was IFS, but mm -hmm. it had leaf springs in the rear, and right. You said that's made right, a huge like said difference. That, yeah, the the bed on the truck with the leaf springs. When it's empty, just anytime you go over anything, the way leaf springs work, they rebound. And so when they go up, they have to come down, and they go up and down, up and down really harshly until they get back to center. But with coil springs, they don't do that. They just go up, and then they go back to where they started. And so it, when you go over a, a really uh, a harsh incident, I guess is what the correct terminology for suspension, it uh, it's, it's a lot more... Um, it's a lot better dampening with the shocks and the coil springs as opposed to leaf springs. So on the road, you do feel that solid front axle. It does, you know, it's, it's a Jeep, it's solid front axle vehicle. So it, you can definitely feel the, you've got to keep it centered and you can definitely feel the solid front axle, you know, bouncing a little bit when it goes over some things. But when you go over something like a speed bump or a pothole or something, it definitely doesn't – it's not as harsh when you go through those things as the truck was because of the cool springs in the rear. And I like that a lot better. Yeah. that's. I, I was shocked when you told me that, that you actually liked the way the Wrangler drove versus your ZR2. Yeah. I, I, was, I was shocked about that. Yeah. Um, Robert has a question. He said, would you recommend a two-door over a four-door? For someone who already has an awesome overleg and led, overland rig, <laughs> aka his forerunner. Um, and Robert, we did talk well, about you earlier before you you chimed on and said you're not allowed to get a Jeep because we're not going to turn this into a Jeep channel. <laughs> um, but 
I mean, if you want a toy, like just for fun off roading, I'd say two door. Well, but if you need to, if you need to, I, I I tell people between two door and four door. Two door you can haul people or stuff. A yeah. four door you can haul people and stuff. Yeah, yeah. We, so. We've got to think about who's asking this question. And at exactly. any give at any given time, if Robert opens a door on his Forerunner, like ten different things are probably going to fall out because he's he's got he so could, much stuff in there. I don't think he could fit everything in a two door. That I mean, he would have to go super minimal. He is he is very prepared. He has everything he to live out of his Forerunner for weeks at a time, and so he would have to definitely cut back on some things if he was to go with the two door. <laughs> I would love to see him try. <laughs> that would yeah. be fun. Now, John, I fun. think John could definitely do a two-door. He John could live to, out of a side-by-side. -side. Yeah, he might have to redo his sleeping arrangement, but he could fit all of his stuff. <laughs> I mean, he break, sometimes he sleeps in hammocks, so. Yeah. Um, but, and then, he, let's see, where'd that go? Oh, here we go. Then John, Robert also asked, what do you think about the Extreme Recon versus Rubicon? And uh, I think, mean, because you, 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 you actually looked at one of the Extreme Recons, didn't you? I haven't seen one in person, but I've I looked at a few links to one. Um, I think in Oklahoma, and there was another one somewhere. Um, but yeah, the, the Extreme Recon's are a really cool package. Yeah, I think and it's. I mean, it's it's four thousand dollars, and you get, I think, pretty cool wheels. You get thirty five yeah. inch tires. You it's re geared to four five six. You get a heavy duty front axle. Um, all that for four grand. I think it's a heck of a steal. Now, yeah, I think I, it's a great package. Yeah. Now, I, the Extreme Recon is one that you would pick if, like, you want to go 35s and boom, you're done. Like, right. you don't buy the Extreme Recon to add a different lift and add different, you know, to. You, yeah. If the, you just the want 35s that I and be done with it, you just go like, Extreme Recon. is great. Yeah. The analogy I used was like the TRD Pro. Toyotas they have the upgraded suspension. They have a little bit bigger tires. They have extra skid plates, um, you know, things like that. And if you buy that, you pay all that money for that. There's no point in upgrading it. Plus, you know, you, you've had it for a while and you're like, you change the way you want to do your build. You don't want to go buy a new forerunner or whatever. You can modify that. But if you're, if you want a vehicle that's just ready to go off the lot, as capable as you can get it, TRD Pro is it. It's right. the same thing with the Extreme Recon. You pay that little bit of extra money, and it's it's ready to go right it's off done. the lot. You don't really have to do much to it. Definitely. Uh, yeah, Muncie yeah. says four-door. He wish he had gotten that instead of his two-door. Um, oh, yeah. um, let's see. So, I contemplated a two-door. Yeah? With with kids and you know some of the stuff that I like to bring, I, I just think the, the little extra space was the four-door better suited my needs. Um, someone asked earlier, what, what mods are you, what's your plan for it? What's your plan for your, for your um, engine? I want to leave this dock for a little while. You know, I, I had my ZR2 for four years, a little over four years. And like we said earlier, the only thing I ever did to it was I went from a 31 and a half inch tire to a 33 inch tire, um, and some wheels. And then, you know, the rest of it was just bolt-on stuff that for, for overlanding, my bed rack and my tent, some skid plates and lights and some interior things. But as far as suspension and powertrain goes, it was it was completely stock. And I, I loved everything about it. And this one, you know, it has the steel bumpers and it's got a winch, which was a big selling point for me. And it's, it's a worn uh, Evo 10S, I think. Yeah, VR10 um, is Evo. I don't know a lot about winches, um, but I think that's what it is. So pretty good, worn winch in the steel bumpers. It's a Rubicon. It's fully loaded. It, I mean, it's just it's ready to go for anything that I would have done in my truck, and it can do even more than the truck did. Um, so I really don't have a lot of plans to put a lift kit on it or anything. Um, I don't really want to go up to bigger tires just yet because those tires still have plenty of life left in them. The only 
thing that I, I think I want to do sooner rather than later is a roof rack and some sort of tent on the top just so you know me and Kellen can go camping because he loves being up in the rooftop tent and that that's the main thing to me is you know I can sleep in the back or I can sleep in a hammock um, but he just loves being up in the rooftop tent so some sort of rack and um, some sort of lightweight clamshell um, or I don't know a wedge tent I guess the correct terminology for for the top that's really the only thing I want to do anytime soon um, everything else can come way down the road. Robert says snorkel. Uh, probably not going to have any need for snorkel anytime soon. <laughs> um, I want to, I, I want to keep it out of the deep water for a while. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's a good thing you didn't bring your Jeep on our trip this weekend. Yeah. It would have been, it would have been a problem. A lot. I <laughs> <a> problem. <laughs> um, now, now John did make you a pretty sweet offer on his top and yeah. roof rack. Yeah. So what do you, th what do you think? I don't know. You know, I really like that three quarter or, you know, sl the slim line half, uh, front runner rack that he's got. That's it's a really cool looking rack, and it sits low, and you can still put a bunch of stuff up there, and you can still take the front two freedom panels off, which I I really like. Um, I just wouldn't be able to put a rooftop tent on that rack because it only it doesn't stick out as far forward as I would need. Um, but he also has the full. Does it, doesn't he have that? Doesn't rack. he have that piece though? He does have the full length rack, but it has to connect to the cowl and go up yeah. the roof. And yeah, it has to connect. I don't really want that, that those bars sticking down. I, I don't like the look of that. And I mean, it kind of like would that be would like in the way. I mean, but it also could serve kind of as, as limb protection to your A pillar. Yeah. So there's that. Yeah, until it gets past the bars and it scratches all down the side of the Jeep. Well, I mean, that's going to happen. Um, uh, someone's looking in your garage and says he's concerned that a roof rack and an RTT, you're not going to be able to get it out of the garage. That's true. Uh, I measured and I, I have about I have about eight inches there to, to play with. So I would have to get something pretty thin. Um, I'm thinking, like I said, a wedge style tent. And those are usually four to six inches tall. So like a, a roof nest or the, the GFC super light is really what I want because it's it's very thin. If you take the mattress out of it, uh, it's like three inches. So if I get a short roof rack and that, I think I would have plenty of room. Um, and it's very lightweight. It, but there's all kinds of those wedge style tents that I think would probably be fine. But I did measure. That's a good point. I did measure to see. <laughs> yeah, because you've got a pretty short garage. That's, that's kind of like installing like, a, a four inch lift kit inside the garage and then trying to pull out. <laughs> you don't fit. Um, yeah, I don't think my gladiator would fit in your garage. Um, I don't know. Probably not. No, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> and Kara's Grand Cherokee with her tent's actually taller. The, the tent sits up higher than mine on the gladiator yeah. in her Grand Cherokee. So yeah. um, there you go. Troy says, air down mm -hmm. your tires every time you need to get in and out. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. But um, it's not going to be parked outside, so I definitely have to do something that I could get in and out of the garage with. And if I have to take yeah. the tent off and lean it up against the wall like that one is, and then pull the I mean, Jeep you did in. That, and then... You did that every time on your ZR2, yeah. just mm -hmm. because you didn't want to lug the weight around. And I, I still have my 23-0 Breezeway. Um it is for sale. It's currently for, for sale. Tonight only, $1,500. $1,400. I'll do $1,400. $1,400. Going tonight only. $1,400. Put it in the, in the comments. <laughs> 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 uh, but yeah, I, st I still have it for now. So, I mean, if, if it just comes to the point where, you know, nobody wants it, then I can, I can get a roof rack and throw that on there. We still got a tent, so we're not without one. 
That's true. You just need that rack. Have you looked at yeah. availability? I mean, other than John's, which you get, um, but like if you ordered the running rack backbone, are they available to even ship? I haven't looked. Um, yeah, James, have to wait six some months to get them in. I've looked. I've looked on some websites like Northridge and um, Quadratech. I think they all have them in stock, ready to go. The, the, oh, okay. specific, the same exact rack that James has is really what okay. I'd like to get. He's got the now three his bars are not low bars. profile. Yeah, his bars are not low are. profile ones. Are they? Maybe they go. He says they are. Because I sent him the one that wasn't low profile, and he said, "No, you don't want that one." Oh, okay. Yeah, I haven't looked at those. You want what I've got? Yeah. yeah. Uh, someone, yeah, someone says you can uh, just hook the winch to the rear axle and kind of suck the jeep <laughs> down to, to get it in. Yeah. Um, that is a possibility. Yeah. Um, So, um, all right. So we covered the mods. We covered the the stuff. Um, let's, uh, yeah. So we mentioned that uh, your Jeep would not have fared well this weekend on our trip. We did yeah. the cold water Probably. run, our annual <laughs> trip. Um, we did, we, we ran the high water mark trail, my 2019 version, and had a blast. Um, awesome. but I was actually wasn't expecting to find the deep water that we did find. I thought it would be lower than it was yeah. uh, because yeah. we hadn't had much rain recently at all. Um, right. but we had three Jeeps on 37s and multiple water crossings where the water went over the 37s. Yeah. Um, and we did have the Roberts Forerunner on 35s, and he did not float away. But uh, he did he did end up getting water in his gas tank, and yeah. having to be having to be towed out. Um, but yeah, I don't think uh, I, I don't think a stock Rubicon on 33s would have made it. No. Yeah, I think I would have floated down the river. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think I think you would have. Yeah, I think you definitely would have high blocked. Um, yeah, on the Woolham crossing and then that one other crossing that we that we did. Yeah. Um, but um, we do have a trip coming up in February, where we are all committing to sleeping in hammocks, no matter what the weather is. We're calling it the frozen butt hang weekend mm -hmm. and um i'm i am committing to you that we will have a route that your jeep will be just fine on and we're gonna make it happen so that that can be your jeep's debut and maiden one of the voyage videos. yep the the big Sweet. reveal sounds so, good yeah um, i mean i like i've been saying to y'all I'm not afraid to wheel it. It's just, it's a big purchase. You know, Jeeps are not cheap vehicles, especially JLs and Gladiators, um, Rubicons. They're, they're not cheap vehicles. And my truck wasn't necessarily cheap either. And I scratched it, all the pieces, and it had dents all over it. Um, some of them you know, user error, some of them just because of the, the vehicle was really wide and um, just had some capability problems. Sometimes the Jeeps like to run into me for some reason. I don't know what the deal is with that, but um, so, and I was driving around an expensive vehicle with all these scratches and dents and everything. And I know everybody says that the, the scratches are a badge of honor and, and all that stuff, but just, for me, it's black, and I know the scratches are going to show up bad. And for for at least a little while, I I want it to keep. I want it to look good as well. I don't want it to look like it's a beater, you know. Um, at, Wait, at least are for you a while. You don't want it to look like Knuckles did. Um. Well, maybe <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I didn't have any big dents, as far as I know, but it was pretty scratched up. <laughs> No, yeah, Knuckles had no dents, um, but it did have more scratches than yeah. paint left uh, yeah, because the black. It, it now, now yeah. I would love to see. I mean, because you're you know you're going to get it scratched. 
Yeah, I mean, eventually. it's going to get scratched eventually. It's that the first one does hurt. Um, but uh, there you go. Oh, do an OO wrap on it before it gets scratched up. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's going to get scratched. But I would love to know. I mean, I don't know if you have much experience with the whole, you know, buffing and waxing and stuff. Because I, I mean, I, I there was there was never a coat of wax that hit knuckles. <laughs> my my twenty twelve black Rubicon. There was there was yeah. never a coat of wax that hit that jeep. So I would be I, I would be curious to see if you know after a trip to the Ozarks, you know, putting some wax on it and buffing it out to to know if it it actually removed many of the scratches. I, I specifically bought a Black and Decker little handheld buffer, and I did use it on my truck a couple times, and it it removed a lot of the surface pinstripes and you know unless you, it was silver so silver hide scratches pretty well um and so after i went through and buffed it and waxed it and everything unless you were like right up close looking for them you really couldn't see them and and so that made a big difference and now i don't know how well that would work on the black probably not very well um but i mean that that's something that um Something that I can do once it does finally go out and you know get a few pinstripes and stuff like that. But that's way down the road. Like I said, it's it's going to be yeah. stock and not necessarily pavement princess. We'll call it gravel road pave gravel road princess for a little while and, until you know just I don't have a hard you know date in mind, but down the road. Yeah. Well, I think it's going to be fun. Um, Oh yeah, Robert says John takes and a I, toothbrush I can... to his, and I would not be surprised. <laughs> yeah, his own toothbrush probably. Him and his Jeep but... share a toothbrush. <laughs> <laughs> and Norm says, "Yeah, because I have a dent in my tailgate. I actually do have a dent in my tailgate." Um, uh, true. That uh, actually, you know, I had a for big Jeep in my ZR2. You yeah, you had a bunch of dents in your ZR2. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I had one yeah. specifically in my tailgate though that I got on the very first cold water run. You did. Uh yeah, you did. Maroon a certain maroon jeep. Uh, uh-huh. Was that let's see, long, is the dent visible? Is the dent visible? Yep, there it is. You can yeah, see the dent right, right there. On the Colorado symbol. <laughs> yep. That's it. Where's the dent in your rear quarter panel in this photo? Um that's on the other side. I think. I thought that was on the driver's side. I don't side. know. There was so many. <laughs> well, there's one right below the gas tank right there. I got that on Bonfire Run. I was, yeah, that's uh, the one going I was down thinking. a trail, and Ryan goes, you're just messing up your truck, man. <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? And I got out, and that whole little panel there was caved in. And we, we even tried to hook a winch up to it and pull yeah, it out. Yeah, I hooked my winch up to it to pull it out some. Because you yeah. said well, it was rubbing into your tire, wasn't it? Yeah. So we yeah, had to I couldn't even pull drive it out it. some. I couldn't yeah. drive it because it was digging into my tire. We had to winch the panel out yep. so that I could get off the trail. Yep. And I had replaced oh, the gosh. bumper from it being dented. and Yeah. I mean, you had but, so many memories in that truck, though. Are you are you yeah. looking forward to, to making memories in your new one? No, for sure. For sure, yeah. I mean, it. before I bought that truck, I never even heard the word overlanding and I had never been off-roading before. I'd never, I'd really never even been camping besides going to like deer camp where we slept in, you know, campers. Um, but I'd, I'd never slept in a tent before. I'd never been off-roading in full drive before. Um, you know, I, I'd never been to these amazing trails over in Colorado. I didn't know our the trails in the Ozarks, the Washtaws existed. I didn't I didn't know that those were there. And so, you know, buying that truck not only allowed me to go to these amazing places, but it got me involved in the awesome community and um, you know, really was kind of the gateway to making some of the best friends I've ever had in my entire life. And um, I don't really get attached to physical things very much, um, but I, I can't lie and say that there might have been a, a few little 
wet eyes driving away from the dealership with the ZR2 in the rearview mirror. Um, just thinking back on all the oh yeah the places and the friends that um, that we went and the, the things that we shared together. Um, but yes, I'm very much looking forward to doing the same thing and more with the Jeep and uh, can't wait to get it off road and get to camp and go to some more amazing places. Yeah. Yep. Actually, you and I met. Yeah, that's glad to meet Robert. But you and I met on your very first trip. To, was that your very first trip to those arcs? The time you and um, I met? Yes. Yes. That was the very first time I'd ever been to the Ozarks. And that was the very first time I'd ever camped out of my vehicle that weekend. I wish I had a picture of your, your setup. You had one of those. It was a traditional tent, but it was the tent that was on the bed. It, it went yeah. over the bed. So you, it, that was a lot of fun because you had to pull everything out mm -hmm. and then set up your tent. Yeah. And then in the morning, tear down your tent and then load everything back up. Yeah. Yeah, you had to take everything out, put an air mattress in the bed, and the tent leaked and ripped, and that was uh, that was terrible. Yeah, and then I bought, uh, a, bought now, that Smitty. Tell everybody, in, and that was a game changer. Now you and I didn't meet at this moment, but the first time you in, encountered me, <laughs> or at least my Jeep. Yeah, yeah. So th it was it was that same weekend. Um, a friend and I, Cody Barrett, he uh, had a, a Tacoma, and I had a ZR2, and they were pretty much, you know, equally equipped. Um, so we uh, met up to go run the High Watermark Trail uh, back in 2019, and um, we get to we get all the way down to the Big Piney Crossing, and we get backed up behind like four, five, six vehicles because you have to go down this little windy trail and you can't see the water from where we're parked at. There's several vehicles backed up and we're like, what in the world is going on? Yeah, there's a, a traffic jam down there. Yeah. And so Cody gets out and he goes up there to see what's going on. And um, he walks back and he's like, man, we're not going to be able to cross. There's a, a, a Jeep on 35s going across and it's halfway up his doors and he's getting stuck out in the middle and we're just not going to be able to do it. So we turned around and left before, you know, we figured out what was going on. We um, took an alternate route over to Bergs, where the bonfire is. And it's dark. And we couldn't see any signs. We didn't know where the bonfire was. And so we see, I think it was Justin and Chris, we saw their forerunners and we recognized them. And they were leaving. And we're like, well, Mm -hmm. I guess there's no party here, so we'll just follow them. We follow them, and and uh, eventually they stop, and they're like, who's following us? And get out, and we talk to them, and like, hey, can we come camp with y'all? Because we're like miles away from birds now. And they said, yeah, and we get to the waterfall, and um, we realized that uh, the leader of this convoy of vehicles was Matt McClellan. And... And I was Turned the crazy dude the, crossing the, the big the Jeep piney. on 35s that was trying to cross a big piney in the deep part of the year was Matt McClellan. It was that guy. Yeah. And we've been and best friends ever since. That's right. And you, Cody left you at 3 a.m. and drove out <laughs> and you stayed with us. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I remember the, the worst. I was so frustrated with that crossing because, yeah, the thing about the big piney is once the water level gets up to a certain point, there's boulders under the water and you can't see them. Yeah. And so I was getting hung up running into some of the big rocks and having to back up and negotiate over them. And it did take me a little while to get through there and the water pretty much was halfway up to my door. Um, mm -hmm. But then I get to the other side and I'm like, yes, come on, let's go. And everybody shouts at me from the other side going, we're not doing that. Come back. <laughs> so, so you had to go back. I then had to cross again because they all whisked out on me and we yep. turned around and did exactly what you did after I crossed yep. the big piney twice. So, but we did it this weekend successfully. Everybody we did, did it again, it. but the water was a lot lower um, on the big yeah, piney. It was a lot lower. It's a kind of cheater. Um, 
Miguel says, do we live in Northwest Arkansas? Actually, we don't live in the same place. I live in Central Arkansas, and I Nathan live in lives up in Arkansas. Northeast Arkansas. And so, so anytime uh, I go to the Ozarks, it's a four, three and a half, four hour drive to get over there. Yep. Um, Kara said, and and back then, and you even you cooked hot dogs instead of making yep. our elaborate meals that we now have. Yep, my storage tote was a cardboard Amazon box. <laughs> <laughs> I threw all my stuff in, threw some hot dogs in a cooler, and off I went. Yep. Uh, man, things have changed so much in three years, hasn't it? Yep, it has. It has. I've gone through several different setups. Now I'm cooking three course meals every time we go camping. <laughs> What's up, Frankie? Just about. Yep, Frankie's Frankie's getting here late. He says, "Hey guys," um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, so much has changed in in three years. Going from um, that bone stock Colorado with the bed tent, then you added the rooftop tent. You had started with the Smitty built, yeah, and then you upgraded to the twenty three zero that you have now, mm-hmm. and that has served you well. Um, yeah, but yeah, I love that twenty three zero tent. Um, but then this weekend you were changed, you changed it up again. Yeah. I went the complete opposite direction and I was building up and then I got this really nice 23 zero rooftop tent and I had a fridge and all these boxes and all kinds of stuff, table, tarp, canopy, water tanks, even had a water pump at one point, Um, CO2 tank, gas cans, everything. And then this weekend, um, I had, I had planned on leaving my ZR2 at home, or at least not on the trail and riding with you. And I already had that plan all in motion. And then I bought the Jeep. And so I, I just decided to stick with that plan. And the plan was to ride with you and hammock camp, which is the first time that I've ever done that. And I have to say, it was awesome. I, I loved sleeping in the hammock. It was extremely comfortable. Um, and it was cold this weekend. Those, it got down to cold. like 20 degrees one night. Um, yeah. It was very cold. Yeah, and everybody else is cranking up their diesel heaters and their electric blankets and all that kind of stuff. Did you not? And, you didn't uh, use electric blanket at all one night? Did you not use John's? The the very first night, no, I was just just in the hammock. Now the next two nights, I did have that uh, that James let me borrow a electric blanket. Okay, and that was a little bit nicer. Yeah, did that help? I've never slept. I've never it, used an electric blanket in, in my hammock. It did help a little bit. Yeah. Okay. I had it on low, and but yeah, uh, Robert let me borrow his uh, hammock gear set up with the zero degree quilts and all that, and. It was very, very comfortable. Usually on the first night, I don't sleep very well, either because I just, I'm getting acclimated to the cold or, you know, just the nerves of being in a different place and the, the excitement about the rest of the weekend. I don't sleep very well that night. That first night, I slept from, you know, 10 or 11, whenever we went, we went to sleep. And I didn't wake up until 6.30 a.m. I was very warm, very comfortable. And I really liked that. And, you know, Robert, for the longest that I've known him, has had a rooftop tent on his vehicle. Really nice rooftop tent, but he still mm-hmm. prefers to hammock camp. <laughs> yeah. And he's been actually this know, weekend. Con- yeah. Thursday night was the first time I've seen him sleep in that tent in, in mm-hmm. a long time. And he's been trying to convince me to, you know, to try hammock camping and, see how I liked it and I, I really really liked it and just and if you get the right type of setup it's easy to set up and it's easy to take down and it all packs into a, a pretty small duffel bag or a stuff sack and that's your that's your sleeping setup and it all fits in there and extremely extremely warm with those zero degree quilts so that's going to yeah. be when I go solo in the jeep 
that's probably going to be what I do is, is hammock camp. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, Kara says she, you mentioned borrowing Robert's um, hammock gear stuff. And she says you, she thought you had all the stuff. I have two setups. So I bought my own um, bunch of uh, wise owl is the brand, a bunch of stuff from Amazon. It had some good reviews, but the uh, under quilt was only rated to 40 degrees. And um, I don't really like the, the way the bug net works with the X. You have to have two ridge lines. And Robert's setup is hammock gear, which I don't really know a whole lot about hammocks, but I know that everybody really likes hammock gear. And that's what Robert uses. And Robert's been hammock camping for several years. So I trust his judgment and I knew his quilts were zero degree. So I used his stuff and. I'm glad I did because I don't know how well the 40 degree quilt would have worked. <laughs> yeah, it probably would have, probably would not have been would not, would not have been as yeah as as functional as comfortable. And I've gotten I've gone from sleeping in a hammock when I had my Wrangler, and now I'm all bougie, now you're bougie. in my rooftop <laughs> tent and my diesel heater that made me sweat Friday yeah. night because I turned it up a little too high and I was sweating in my tent just sleeping in my undies, just like I do at home. And it was mm -hmm. fantastic. I loved it. Yeah. But yeah, mm -hmm. I've gone from just hammock camping to, to, to being all bougie in my tent. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I'm excited that. about Eventually our, I may get back to that. Yeah. I'm excited about our frozen heater. I'm excited about our frozen butt hang. Cause I mean, Kara's going to go on that yeah. too. And she's got a great hammock set up and I've got a great hammock set up. And it's going to be, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I do. Yeah, that'll be a fun trip for sure. It will. Um, all right, let's uh, let's transition to things coming up because we've talked all about your Jeep. We've talked about the ZR2. Uh, we've talked a little bit about our weekend. Can't spoil everything because the video is coming out on Friday for that. Um, but let's, you've, I mean, you have been the photographer for our trips for a while now. I used to do both. I used to take a lot of the photos. Um, yeah. And then you got a camera and started really learning how to do the photography. And now I've just, I, I don't, I don't even, when you're with me, I don't even pick up my photo, <laughs> my photography camera anymore. I just leave it in the yeah. bag. It saves me so much um, just time and mental energy to know that you are taking all the still photos so I can focus on video and doing other things. Um, and I mean, you're, to see how you have grown in your photography skills is just awesome. And it's even gotten to the point that people are asking you to come and take photos of their events. Yeah. Um, yeah that's, that's been uh, a work in progress for a, for a couple of years now. And so finally how can starting to pay off a little bit? I mean, other than, you know, you're, you're, you know, just friending you on Facebook. Um, what's the best way for people to, to see your photos? Uh, so pretty much every single photo that I've ever taken of overlanding or events or anything like that on my website, nathananderson.photography.com. Um, I, I kind of have a, a feed sort of like an Instagram feed on the, the home page that just shows kind of my favorite photos of recent trips. Um, and then there's an albums link up at the top that has several iCloud albums. Um, and they're all labeled by the name of the trip for the event and they're all on there and you can go check them out. And if you see any that you like that if you're in the photos, then, you know, feel free to, to download them and share them to social media if you like there's thousands and thousands of pictures on there so oh but you you will take over a thousand photos just on our trips how many did you take this weekend what was your what was your final count uh i took a thousand and eighteen and then okay i, I thought, you, did, I thought down. you took a thousand in like one day no that was total okay. of the weekend i, I did okay. take about 700 on uh I guess Saturday. Cause that was kind of our longest day was Saturday. And then, uh, um, Fri Friday, Friday, Friday. Yes. Yeah. We were, yeah. On, we were four days. Cause I'm editing the video. 
Yeah, I'm editing the video, and from the beginning of the video to just Friday night camp, I'm at almost an hour of, of yeah. footage. So. <laughs> yeah, so I, I did take about 700 photos on Friday. Um, but then after the whole weekend, you know, whittling them down, I got about four, 430 something that I actually That's exported and shared. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, Matthew wants to know what kind of camera you use. I use a Nikon Z50 mirrorless camera, and uh, I really love it. It's it's, a, yeah. it's an incredible camera. It takes really really good pictures and very light. Kara has and the portable. Yeah, Kara has the same camera, and I love and I my camera's big and it's heavy, yeah. um, but I love how small and light that Z50 right. is. I just, I yeah, love it's, that. it's great for running up and down the trails. And um, if you get a pretty lightweight lens, then you have a really small, lightweight package to run up and down the trails with. And it doesn't, it's not too big of a burden. And then when I'm walking around at events and stuff, and I, I have a shoulder strap on and have it hanging at my hip or whatever, it, it doesn't, it's not super heavy. So that's really nice to, to have a, a lightweight camera to carry around. Yeah. Um, do you use Lightroom to edit? Yep. I use Lightroom Mobile on my 12.9 inch iPad Pro. So everything I do is done on my iPad. I don't have a Mac or a Windows PC at all. Everything is done on the iPad. From importing and editing to exporting, um, saving all my raw files to iCloud, and then sharing them um, with the iCloud shared albums. Everything is done to the iPad. And it works very well. Yep. Yeah, yeah it, works it works very great. well. And I can even um, take my iPad on the trail with me. And like we did at camp, I put all the photos on there and I was able to show off a few pictures around the campfire. I like yep. that. Yeah, I love it when you do that. Um, so coming up, uh, speaking of your photography, it has become official. You are the official photography for the Moore Expo or f official photographer for the more expo that is yep. way cool yeah i'm super excited about that i just talked to chris today and got that all nailed down and we talked about some plans to to do some you know really cool stuff at, at more expo and um i'm super excited about that i've i've done a few other events and like uh the big iron which i loved taking pictures at big iron mm -hmm. um that was that was really cool and then I was able to do the rendezvous in the Ozarks this year. That was a lot of fun as well. Um, but the Moore Expo is going to be a whole different challenge because um, it is just, it's on a much bigger scale as far as vendors go. And it's going it to be massive this year. It's going to be inside and there's going to be way more people there. And it's going to be a, a really cool challenge. Um, but I like the challenge and. Chris is going to be super helpful. He, he's just he, he runs that event like a well-oiled machine, and he knows what he's doing, and he's got me pointed in the right direction. So I think it's going to be really cool. I'm looking. I'm really looking forward to doing that. Um, Troy says Troy, you haven't met Troy, have you? I don't think so. Troy was on our first uh, subscriber weekend that we did. I know you haven't got a chance to. to you weren't there at that one. Um, yeah. but Troy makes a grilled cheese cheeseburger mm. where the bun is two grilled cheese sandwiches. That so the sounds... grilled cheese sandwich, then the burger and cheese and another grilled cheese sandwich. I can and feel my is, arteries clogging. <laughs> yeah, it's a heart attack waiting to happen, <laughs> and, but it is unreal the way I they bet. season these things and sonic sonic's even copying them right now um you can get yeah. one that's Sonic, but it's not as good as troy's but yeah troy's gonna be at more expo and he already promised to make us grilled cheeseburgers so you're gonna have to have one and take a picture of one because they're yeah. incredible oh um, for sure um but that is gonna be that's gonna be great so that's april 8th 9th and 10th and in Springfield, Missouri, if you are listening and, or watching and you do not have your tickets to the Moore Expo, go get them. 
because we will be there yep. and it is going to be fantastic. Um, and I think that's it. It's uh, it's 10 05. So let's call it a night. I have enjoyed just hanging out with you again. Yeah, me too. So Carol should, will be we back do it again, next uh, week. A couple weeks from now. <laughs> we should. Uh, Carol will be back next week, and I'm sure she'll have uh, some very exciting things to share next week, why, why she is gone tonight. Um, but we will uh, see you next time. And thanks, everybody, for joining in. Bye. See you.